Let's talk about the Sphinx for a couple minutes. You know, I know Robert Schock has done some incredible work on that with the erosion on the Temple of the Sphinx. And um, can you talk to us a little bit about what what is some of the evidence that the Sphinx is a much older uh, monument? There's several different lines of evidence and, and ways of thinking about the Sphinx that sort of point towards that. One one is obviously the fact that it seems likely that its head has been recarved. Right, anyone that looks at it and sees it. You'll notice the head's kind of out of proportion to the body. It's a little small relative to the body. The dynastic Egyptians were masters of proportion and sculpture. They've made beautiful works of art. This wouldn't have been a deliberate choice by them. But perhaps it's the result of them recarving the head, and it may have been something else. A lot of people have theorized that maybe the head was that of a lion. And so there's astronomical evidence when you look at it. It's facing east, so facing the sunrise, and if in... People may or may not know about the, the the great year or the concept of precession, the precession of the equinoxes, right? So it's one of the many cycles of the Milankovitch cycles that the planet goes through. But but where the sun rises on the on the uh, the, the summer solstice, you know, we we're it's under which constellation defines what age we're in. So today we're in the age of Pisces. So generally, you know, when the sun rises on that on that solstice, it's okay. We're we're under Pisces. We're slowly moving into the age of Aquarius. It, it actually it's a precession of the equinox. It goes back backwards through the constellations, and it's a funny study. That whole area, of the zodiac, that goes back through time and culture. It's very common. It, it goes all the way back to the ancient Egyptians. In fact, so I guess they got the idea from somewhere. But so some people have theorized that that perhaps the, you know if the lion was if it was a lion and it was pointing. Uh, due east, and perhaps the constellation under which it may have been aiming at might have been Leo. It's a connection between that constellation and, and a lion that's been in place for a long time. And again, this strange thing with the zodiac, it, it does have these correlations between cultures and time. Then perhaps that indicates an age of around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago, uh, because the you procession of the equinoxes is 26,000 year cycle. So each age is like two and a half thousand years. Roughly, some constellations are wider than others. So that's one. The other one that's probably more well known that's been the debate that you mentioned, Robert Schock, and we should also remember the great John Anthony West, who kind of theorized this idea in the first place and then invited Robert Schock, who's a professor of, professor of geology uh, from Boston University. So is the erosion that is shown in on the Sphinx, not only on the Sphinx, but probably more importantly, the, the Sphinx enclosure. So for people that don't know, so the Sphinx is is not a like they didn't build it. It's carved from the bedrock. Mm -hmm. It's actually the remnants of what you would call a yardang, which is like a limestone outcrop. But in order to carve it, they actually cut down into the bedrock. They, they created this enclosure and they carved down and then they carved along and then they shaped it from the actual bedrock. So it's not built so much as carved from the bedrock. Uh, the Sphinx has been repaired over time, right? So so there's actually evidence for old kingdom repairs and. So they're repairing it. How close to after the time that it was built? We, I don't know when it was built, but this yeah. this is this is actually an account of it being repaired before it was supposed to have been built. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so I'm not sure it makes a lot of sense. If yeah. I was an Egyptologist, I'd probably go, yeah, that's that's that's, yeah. that's nonsense. Um, yeah. But it's it's I think it's more of an indication of yeah, that, and and there is actually on the body of it, you look like it. it there is what I think is Old Kingdom repair work. You can still see it. It matches other Old Kingdom repair work. So if it was built in the Old Kingdom, why are you repairing it right. straight away? Like, right. what's the point? And yeah. I think it's old. I think there's tremendous evidence. So what my point is that you can't use the body of the Sphinx to really determine things like erosion. Now, a, the nice thing about the enclosure is that nobody's really done anything to the enclosure. They've carved a few caves into it here and there. But the walls of the enclosure essentially haven't been touched. They haven't been repaired. There actually have been some fissures repaired here and there. But in general, it's it's pretty original. So what's interesting about it is, is that you can look at the patterns on the walls of the Sphinx enclosure and determine things like erosion. And Robert Schock came along and looked at it as an expert geologist and said, that's rainfall erosion. Like these vertical fissures that you see. Um, you see these horizontal fissures in, uh, in, the, in the walls, but that's more to do with the different layers of limestone, it's a sedimentary rock, so it gets laid down in layers, and some layers are harder than others, so it erodes at different rates, leaves these you know, horizontal striations over time. But there are vertical fissures on the wall too, and he's like, that's rainfall erosion. Now, everybody knows Egypt's a bit of a desert. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it rain there. It's, it's infrequent. But in order to get that type of erosion on those walls, you're talking about thousands of years of quite heavy rainfall. Mm. And you have to go back to periods of time like 9,000 years ago and more 
when Egypt was green and verdant and more tropical and there was rain. And But you have to go back even further because it takes thousands of years of rain to get that type of erosion. Now, there's, of course, there's lots of debate about this and argument because it's a, it upsets the apple cart. Uh, about the story of history, but it's tough to argue with. If if you just if you ever took a picture of, you know, I define it, take a picture of that rain of the, of that section of the wall of, of limestone, with remove the context. Don't tell anyone that this is Egypt or the Sphinx enclosure. And show it to a, your geologist. Nine times out of ten, probably more, they're going to say, "Well, that's rainfall erosion on limestone." So there's all sorts of wacky ideas and 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 debates. Things like they a lot of times I like to say was well, wind and sand erosion. See. I often I I hate this argument because for one you give the Sphinx ten years fifteen years without it being maintained the thing fills up to its chest in sand like the the, the enclosure gets buried very quickly this has happened time and time again in our records we have tons of you go back look at old photos of the Sphinx buried up to here and it's literally happened between excavations like there's been excavations. Someone finishes, they clear it all out, and then 10 years later, the next guy comes in and goes, oh, I've got a year of work trying to clear all this yeah. sand out again because yeah. it just fills up. It happened during the dynastic. The Romans had to dig it out. You know, Thutmose IV had to dig it out. That's the whole dream stele that's between the legs of the Sphinx. It tells the story of Thutmose IV who fell asleep in the shadow of the Sphinx and he and had a dream, and the Sphinx said, hey, dig me up and you'll become king. Like, clean me off, you know? Yeah. So it's, and, but the one part, what's the one part that doesn't get buried? The head. The head. Right. Is there evidence to suggest that the Sphinx head was the only thing that was sticking out during the time of the Egyptians? Well, I think for, for long periods of time, I'm sure that's what was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my point about it is, is that if you're saying that, that it's wind and sand erosion on the, on the enclosure, buried, the part that is always buried. So it must have had enough exposure to, to wind and sand and of course, mainstream Egyptologists, uh, or it's the mainstream story, they don't talk about the Sphinx's head being recarved. It's all OG, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And But the part of the Sphinx that is always exposed to wind and sand. It's the head. The head. Do you see any, it, there's no erosion like that on the head. Like, and the head hasn't been, I mean, there's been some modern concrete repair to shore up the neck. But in general, they haven't like been touching up the head. You just don't, it's limestone. You don't see the same erosion on the head. It's 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 this reverse contradiction, like reverse logic. This contradiction in the story that is so common uh, when you dig into the details of this story, mm -hmm. and and it's just you just have to sort of dig in a bit and not believe what you what you're told on the in the first account, and you'll you'll easily find these sort of contradictions. That's a big one for me. And there's been many many studies done into this from for the last 80, 90 years where they've looked at. Limestone on coasts that are affected by wave action, limestone under all sorts of different circumstances. So you can take those studies and apply what we see to the walls of the Sphinx enclosure. And once again, you come back with figures that are like, damn, this might be 50,000 years old, like just looking at the erosional patterns. So there's a ton of evidence that suggests the Sphinx is, is much older.